MH370, a journey full of riddles and unanswered questions. On March 8, 2014, the world was shocked to discover that Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 had gone missing. Since then, speculations have run wild and much debate has been had over the crash of the plane. Now, a new video sheds light on this infamous unsolved mystery. This video will explore the events of the Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, which crashed on March 8, 2014, claiming 239 lives. We will look at how different countries responded to the tragedy and analyze the implications of their decisions and actions for regional relations. Finally, we'll discuss how this incident has changed aviation security standards around the world. So stay tuned as we explore this unsolved mystery of the Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared on March 8, 2014 during a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew members. Search efforts for the missing Boeing 777 extended from the Indian Ocean to Central Asia, making it one of the most famous missing aircraft in history. Flight 370 departed Kuala Lumpur at 12.41 a.m. local time, carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew members from 14 countries, including China, Australia, Canada, France, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Iran, the Netherlands, Russia, Taiwan, and Ukraine. The aircraft's last automated position report was sent at 1.19 a.m. The final voice transmission from the cockpit was related to air traffic controllers. Malaysia Airlines announced that Flight 370 was missing about an hour after its scheduled arrival in Beijing, with three Americans among those on board. At 12.42 a.m. local time, Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 departed from the tarmac en route to Beijing. Subsequently, the pilots communicated with Kuala Lumpur Air Traffic Control ATC, and were given permission to ascend to 35,000 feet, flight level 350. After 19 minutes of flight, the captain reported reaching flight level 350, and 25 minutes into the flight, the aircraft's data transmission was lost. At approximately 1 hour and 22 minutes into the flight, a satellite communication link was established. However, it is unclear what was the exact time. At 1.19 a.m., Captain Zahari communicated with air traffic control and indicated the transition from Lumpar radar to Ho Chi Minh ACC. He stated, Malaysian 370, contact Ho Chi Minh 120.9, good night. This was the last verbal signal sent before communication ceased. At 7.37 p.m. local time on the evening of March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight MH370 made its last communication with air traffic control. This good night message was followed by an automated handshake with the Inmarsat Satellite Communication Network every hour for seven hours. At 8.19 p.m. local time, or seven hours and 37 minutes into the flight, MH370 sent a long flight on request. This type of connection is typically activated when an aircraft has lost all its fuel and is running on emergency power. Also at 8.19 p.m., MH370 sent a logon acknowledgement message to the ground station, which marked its final transmission from flight level 250. After an hour of no further contact, the authorities declared that MH370 had run out of fuel and likely crashed into the Indian Ocean. To this day, the fate of Flight MH370 remains a mystery. Many theories emerged from questions left with mysterious Flight MH370. Let's dig deep into it. To begin with, reports from news outlets such as ABC News and the Los Angeles Times have raised speculation of a possible hijacking incident. Unofficial researchers have identified over 600 potential runways where the plane was capable of landing, yet no group has claimed responsibility for the act, and Malaysian officials remain silent on the matter. As such, it remains unclear what the actual cause was behind this mystery. Secondly, the specially fortified cockpit doors of Flight 370, mandatory for all commercial aircrafts, 
provided the additional security measure needed to protect against hijackings and potential pilot suicide incidents. This feature echoed similar preventative measures taken in cases such as Silk Air Flight 185, 1997, Egypt Air Flight 990, 1999, LAM Mozambique Airlines Flight 470, 2013, and the more recent German Wings Flight 9525, 2015. Additionally, just three weeks prior to the disappearance of the plane, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 702 had been successfully diverted when its co-pilot locked out the captain during a hijacking attempt. These events serve as reminders of the importance of secure cockpit doors in the modern aviation system, but still lacked confirmation. Thirdly, it's possible that the disappearance of Flight 370 might have been caused by a fire aboard the plane, such as in its cockpit, cargo compartment, or landing gear. It's worth noting that an incident with a similar aircraft happened back in 2011. Egypt Air Flight 667 experienced an intense fire fueled by oxygen while still on the ground. This damaged the flight controls, instruments, and even burned a hole in the hull of the aircraft. So it's important to consider the possibility that something similar could have happened here. Fourthly, Speculation about a possible cyber attack on Flight 370 has been circulating, largely due to statements from Sally Leavesley, an ex-scientific advisor for the British government. It's unclear if existing systems in commercial flights are strong enough to guard against such attacks, but Boeing insists that this isn't likely. Moreover, CNN reported that Rush Limbaugh, an American political commentator, suggested that the plane could have been shot down. People backing this hypothesis point out that in the past, military forces have done this to civilian aircraft. For example, Iran Air Flight 655 by the U.S. in 1988 and KAL-007 by the Soviets in 1983. The Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370 tragedy remains a mystery even after eight years. One of the theories behind it is that the pilots deliberately downed the aircraft in an act of mass murder-suicide. Now, evidence from debris suggests that the landing gear was down when MH370 crashed into the Indian Ocean, which could indicate that this theory is true. The newly found evidence related to the MH370 crash has sparked more speculations, particularly that the Malaysian Airlines flight was deliberately crashed by its pilots in a mass murder-suicide. A recent report by Blaine Gibson and Richard Godfrey suggests that the landing gear of MH370 was down when it hit the Indian Ocean, claiming 239 lives. The level of damage observed led to the conclusion that the plane was in high speed and dived with an intent to break into pieces. Another report, published by the BBC News, suggests the realistic possibility that the landing gear was lowered shows both an active pilot and an attempt to ensure the plane sank as fast as possible after impact. The combination of the high-speed impact designed to break up the aircraft and the extended landing gear designed to sink the aircraft as fast as possible both show a clear intent to hide the evidence of the crash. Now we need to talk about the technical problems of the plane the human errors and the sabotages which are mostly anticipated with this incident. The tragedy of MH370 has exposed the lack of functional cooperation and trust among ASEAN states. Intramural differences have been put aside during the SARS crisis in 2002 to 2003, but this did not happen with MH370. Information was released in a patchy manner and regional mechanisms were seen to be ineffectual. This has only reinforced regional uncertainty and highlighted the difficulty of states in taking harder steps to reduce tensions. The video about the MH370 tragedy, which highlights the lack of cooperation and trust among ASEAN nations. Moreover, Malaysia has been criticized for their handling of information and public relations. China's own response has lacked diplomatic sophistication. This has caused tension between the two countries, making it difficult to repair the relationship. It has been suggested that Japan's delayed involvement in the search has only worsened already strained Sino-Japanese relations. Let's highlight that China did not send any vessels to the alleged crash site. 
Instead, it kept a presence in order to continue pressuring the Philippines while also dispatching large ships from over a thousand nautical miles away to join in the search. And last but not least, the Philippines and Vietnam's involvement in territorial disputes hindered their participation in the search efforts. They both showed the lack of mutual trust and cooperation in handling this issue in full swing. The tragic events of MH370 underscore the importance of safety in air travel. International aviation regulators had warned airlines about the increased risks associated with flying over Ukrainian airspace, and many operators chose to divert around this area to ensure greater safety for their passengers and crew. Unfortunately, such decisions often come at an economic cost. But as the old adage goes, if you think safety is expensive, try having an accident. In the wake of MH370 and other incidents, airlines have made changes to their core values in order to restore public trust in aviation security. The installation of anti-collision and terrain warning sensors and improved flight management systems in air traffic control, ATC, have also improved aircraft safety due to this unsolved mystery. To conclude, the tragedy of MH370 has highlighted the lack of trust and cooperation among ASEAN nations, as well as the need for more improved aviation safety. It has also exposed weaknesses in international regulation and public relations. The incident underscored the fact that even with all of today's technology and advances in air travel, disasters can happen in an instant. We must never forget the lessons of MH370 and strive towards a safer aviation industry. If you want to hear more mysterious events, subscribe to our channel and don't miss any of the latest videos.